We created a three-part color grading bootcamp sharing how we color grade our YouTube videos. This is part one where I share how we set up our project settings because it's a crucial first step to making sure everything is set correctly before moving forward. First of all, the software that we use is DaVinci Resolve. We love DaVinci because we can edit and color grade all in one software and the color grading features have been industry standard for a while now with blockbuster films like Godzilla Minus One and Top Gun Maverick and countless more being color graded in DaVinci Resolve. For the cameras that we use, we shoot an S-Log3 S Cine gamut in our Sony cameras. For the DJI Osmo Pocket 3, we shoot in D-Log M. Both cameras have the capability of recording in 10-bit, which allows us to push the colors without the image breaking apart. Okay, now be ready to follow along because Jack is going to share how to set up your project settings. Let's go over project settings. For timeline resolution, we shoot and export in UHD, so we pick UHD. If you have a computer system that is laggy, you can try 1080p while you're editing and color grading, and then change the settings back to 4K before you export. An under color management tab, the timeline color space is set to DaVinci Y Gamut Intermediate, and the output color space is Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So once we set up the project, let's set up a general node tree. So let's start off with creating five serial nodes. So under color, nodes, add a serial node. You can also use a shortcut, which is what I will do. Remember earlier we chose DaVinci Wide Gamut as the color management system. We want to color grade inside this color space to maximize the quality of the grade. And we need to tell Resolve what type of file we're working with and how we want the conversion to happen. So on the first node, we're going to use Color Space Transform or CST. We want to set the input color space based on the color's camera profile. So the first clip was shot on our Sony A7S III and we shot it in the Sony S Cine Gamma 3 and input Gamma Sony S Log 3. And now for the output color space, we want to set it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. And for the output Gamma, we're going to select DaVinci Intermediate. And then now on the last note, we're going to create another CST. And this time, we're going to select the DaVinci Wide Gamut as our input color space and DaVinci Intermediate as our input gamma. And we're going to output this to Rec. 709 and Gamma 2.4. In between the two CSTs is where we make most of the adjustments. We have more precision to dial in the look inside DaVinci wide gamut because it's a giant color space. So inside the CST, you have a bunch of camera profiles built into it. So let's say if you can't find your specific camera profile inside the input color space and input gamma, you can try to go with something like a 709 for both the color space and input gamma to see what it looks like. So this clip is shot on the DJI Air Osmo, which we use the D-Log M profile. Um, however, the color space transform doesn't have that option. And also D-Log M isn't, a, isn't really a log profile. So we use the LUT provided by DJI to convert it into a 709 looking image. So all you have to do is Google DJI and then whatever system you're using and then LUT. So we have downloaded the LUT from DJI. And this is the Osmo Pocket 3 D-Log M to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. Lastly, real quick, I'm gonna show you how to import a LUT in case you don't know how. You just open up your settings, go to color management, lookup table, open LUT folder, drag your LUT inside, close, update list, and save. And then just restart DaVinci and it should be in there. And that's it for the project settings. In part two, Jack will go over some basic color grading. So stay tuned for that one. And I hope this helped. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.